we're running short on time, uh, so we'll, we'll try to move as quickly as we can. Uh, this particular presentation is a little bit more of a deep dive than, uh, than we did um, yesterday in terms of both the OVID technology and the FM projection technology. And uh, we'll be demoing the FM projection technology, but we're going to start with a, an overview of OVID and what it is. And then if there's questions, we'll probably just go right to the end of the OVID section, do questions, and then jump into FM projection. So uh, this first slide you saw yesterday, I just want to highlight that uh, when you look there next to the application stack, uh, and you're looking at kind of the green OVID pieces, um, that's, the, that's the area where we're talking right now. And, um, I know Jeff will talk a little bit about the architecture of FM projection, but it uses a very similar transport for talking to the, uh, the, the, uh, the file man uh, application or package. And um, uh, the, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, the licensure on this uh, is going to change a little bit. So when you look at the OVID layer right now, it's licensed as an AGPL license. We're going to move that to an LGPL license um, very soon, hopefully within the first quarter here. Uh, so, so just so you're aware, if you're, if you're into the licensing thing, um, you know, both are open source licenses, but we feel like the LGPL will give people an opportunity to have a little bit more freedom about what they create uh, using OVID. So uh, I'm going to move to the uh, next slide here, which is the first of the OVID slides. So Andy, why don't you go ahead? Sure, thank you. Um, uh, OVID stands for Open Vista Interface Domain Layer, and uh, what we wanted to do was to, to come up with a, a platform that we could use uh, our first time was, was in Java, but an extendable platform that we could use to, to gain access to uh, Open Vista data, uh, more specifically Bobman data, because if there's Bobman there, we can, we can get to the data, we, we can also get Bobby on that data, for instance. So we wanted an architecture that we could get to the data with tools like Stata uh, and, and other things to be able to develop different types of applications. And I'm going to go quickly on purpose um, so we can get to the, the little projection stuff because I really want to, to have that first off. But if I still want to have glossy on where you think, you know, give it with me later on, I'll probably just push it until we get it. I apologize for the quick case. Next slide, please. Okay. Okay, I won't read the whole slide here, but I'll point out a few things. Uh, uh, layer, basically, I mean, you have Java binding, but underneath there, there's a, there's this uh, core uh, message resource that is independent of any type of protocol or any type of language that basically knows how to ship a request uh, into a, a, a binding based system and, and get a response back. And then your, your programming tool, the Java, for instance, can then take that data and, and platform slide. We need our own 
that on the last uh, three bullet albums, uh, we're quite proud of because except for releasing Open Out uh, as an open source tool, we really didn't have a whole lot to do uh, with the rest of these applications. These are the things that other people have picked up on this Apple uh, application. Other people have picked that up and developed the kids the platform. So that's kind of uh, a nice feature, something that we would like to see uh, at the kind of world and in the source world. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. This is, this is just a simple uh, overview of the architecture to kind of give a, a, a depiction. And on this, you would probably want to start at the bottom where you have your uh, the gray boxes or your, your cloud applications. Uh, they would go in to this lumber green box that says open domain. That's your business logic. There is that's where you would define your concepts like a patient or an order or medication. And then it was a job of IDs with a Bible such job object supports and they could run uh, in Tomcat, they could run, you know, in, in JBoss, or you know, they could run it so that they had their own little server themselves. And using all of it then you could take the, those concepts and whereas in uh, an RPA uh, uh, relational database where you can go to the database to get your data rather than do that, you can use all of it to make the call to actually get the database and populate or the state of the state of your objects. Uh, at the top there it has open vista uh, like I said before we can also support you know RPA methods at this point. Uh, it also has in the first orange box we're going for the bottom box or RPC broker. Uh, there's nothing that would preclude you from writing your own transport. Uh, that could even be JMS if you want this to be. You don't have any major support for that. But you can write whatever transport that you would want it to be. We just happen to use RPC broker because uh, it's already there. Uh, next slide, please. This is a screenshot from our application that we put together as a demonstration when we initially released Ovid. And if you're familiar with the, the care management uh, tool available from the VA, what we did is we took a lot of the, the back-end RPC that are available with that and we wrapped them with Ovid calls and developed a simple project in another open source tool called Open Lifeflow. So basically, you can get a list of units and you see your own list, you can put them on the unit. You can get a list of patients that are assigned to that unit. And then clicking on a patient, you can get um, different different sets of, of information. And we were able to put this together uh, probably in two or three weeks. It's not a, a production ready application, but uh, the, the development of this was pretty rapid. And the source for this is available on our website. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. As I mentioned before, um, you can develop web services and wrap the older calls in web services. And, and this is an example of a self based web server. Uh, there's also a REST based web server that our, our server has been recently open sourced by the Continuo folks. And um, what this is showing is the kind of contract that's available with a, with a self based web service so that uh, any any tool, be it C sharp, uh, visual, it, it, you know, any of uh, the .NET applications that understand how to consume a so based web service, you can you can expose this uh, data uh, to those types of client applications also. Next slide, please. Okay, models over developed. Uh, as I mentioned before, I think I mentioned before, but before we actually started developing it, we did take a, a survey of what was out there. We found a lot of good tools, uh, but nothing that quite did exactly what we wanted because we wanted to be able to build a business player at that time in Java. Um, so, you know, look, that's how the, the process began. But what we wanted to be able to do was take an existing RPC. We didn't want to replace anything that the hub side could do. What we wanted to do was expose that. So any existing RPC could be used by Open. Likewise, if there's not an RPC that meets your needs, 
you also have the capability of, of constructing a filament top call so that if you have the, if you know the data, you know how the, the, the filament call is structured, you can actually, the job, construct a query uh, to get the type of data you need. You may want to go in and retrieve orders uh, on certain statuses, and you can't find the RPC that exactly meets your needs, or maybe doesn't return all the data that you want along with it. Maybe you don't want to work your own RPC for some reason, you just use the Bowman uh, interface to get to that data. And um, the terms out there is one to bring out. We wanted an architecture that was really simple at its core. What we do on, with, with Java is develop this simple objects. And we try to keep it simple on purpose so that we can, you know, expose it and, and put other technologies on top of that and utilize it. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. How can help it be useful in that domain layer? Uh, the domain layer, of course, is a, it's a model for developing this, a business layer, basically. And that's one of the first things that we wanted to be able to do with it. And we have a, a reference domain model. I mean, it's called Open Domain. And it has some concepts in there like drug and patient and uh, borders and some other things that, that as we come across things that we needed, we, we put them out there by a public. We're in the process, we process of trying to mature uh, that domain model. Um, right now, our body has updated the Java. So any tool that uh, can, can use Java objects natively, uh, which is ready to go with open. If you have another application, say a .NET application, and you have to uh, use some type of silk based or a web based server to get, to get to the data or come up with your own uh, architecture that you would want to use. Um, and there's the problem. What I hope to see in the next year is maybe some other language bodies on top of the open resource layer, which is the, the core model layer uh, of what it does. Okay, next slide, please. And the next two slides, I'm, I'm not going to go through uh, in any great detail, but the, this slide is uh, a link to a document on our, our website, next year, in the board, uh, that I think the bin has that link available called using all the two execute RPCs. Uh, this is the type of information that we have available on all this. Um, you can take this, and if you have RPCs uh, on the business, you want to be able to uh, use those from a Java platform. Uh, this tutorial will take you all the way from trying to find a good RPC, uh, and then if you scroll down, you can see that there's actually some code uh, in this tutorial about how you would go about doing it. And if you're a if you're a Java programmer, uh, hopefully you'll, you'll see that it's really pretty easy uh, to, to be able to, to get something up and going quickly, which is also one of our goals. On the next slide, okay, that this the tutorial we just looked at was about using RPCs that are already there. The next slide is a link to another document that. If you wanted to make bottleneck calls to get your data, not using a, a, a regular RPC that's already out there, this tutorial uh, goes through that process. And it starts out with trying to discover what the structure of your file is because you have to encode that into your source file. And it will talk a little bit about how that is encoded and then how you can make the calls using all of it uh, to get the data that you need. And uh, it has some some sample output. There are a lot of other documents out there. Mm -hmm. so I'll write some more. And our forums are generally uh, pretty active, and we try to be pretty responsive. So uh, if you're not a general programmer, we have people who, who are general programmers who can take this and try to get going with it. And we, we do what we can to try to try to help them out. And that is my last slide. Great, thank you, Andy. So. Uh, I'm going to have Jeff Apple, uh, another one of our developers, speak in a moment about FM projection uh, at a technical level. Uh, I know a few of you saw these slides yesterday. 
Uh, this is the uh, newer uh, release that we're, we're putting out now. It's now available on Medster.org. Uh, basically a technology that will allow you to project the file man structures into a relational database using MySQL. And then uh, uh, from MySQL, you can access that data in, in any number of compatible clients or, or data access layers or, or, or such. Um, so uh, that's available. There is a project now stat stood up on uh, Medster.org. Uh, and that there is a link there to the uh, the Visa repo that contains the source code, and we'll continue to work with it. As Jeff uh, speaks here, um, and, and to Andy's point about assistance, you know, when we released OVID, there was a number of questions about installation and how to do this and how to. And a lot of these tutorials that that uh, Andy pointed out grew from those. So if you do have questions about the technology, please feel free to post, and uh, Andy or Jeff or any one of uh, John, any one of our other engineering staff, you know, will will do their best to answer the questions, and then probably create FAQs around the questions. Um, so, uh, this other slide, the next slide here uh, about FM projection. These are the uh, the architecture and the capabilities at a high level. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, it's a uh, it's a projection tool for FileMan data. It uses MySQL. Uh, it can be used with any of the MySQL tools. There's also a, uh, a, a, and when we get to demo, I'll show you a, a Java-based uh, schema and data viewer that's included so you can kind of inspect the data. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, just so everyone's aware, it, it provides read-only access at this moment. Uh, and we see this useful kind of in the reporting, business intelligence, and data inspection uh, areas uh, where the community probably doesn't have tools now um, uh, that, that kind of bring that data out, expose that data in, in different technologies. Um, as we move to, uh, you know, as we move forward, the idea would be to add to add uh, right access to that. Uh, Bhaskar, you had a question. Oh, quick question: Why do you do this with a network connection rather than an in-process call? Well, it, because of the uh, some of the OVID technology and some of the work that we already done, we were able to ride on top of that transport layer. And uh, the assumption is is that you know we would be able to use other other transports. The idea was to create it. Uh, generically, just as, as Andy mentioned on the OB, OBID side, uh, you know, we, we started with Vistalink, we moved to RPC Broker. I could envision other, perhaps more performant or more low level or however, however somebody, whatever would fit a need being developed as well. Richard. I did a little bit of looking into the cache um, piece that lets you do like SQL queries. Yes. And so their tool they call FM2 cache number two cache, yeah. which and exposes yeah as as cache yeah, objects. I remember you know just running like the basic sample which was it, it's like something like select star creation. Mm -hmm. And what I couldn't quite figure out, and we can maybe present some light on this, is what how I mean, how do you know what the tables are called or the columns are called and what you know in order to, to do sequence. So um, I'll answer briefly, and so Jeff, the question from Richard was around how, how do we know the name, you know, how do we expose the file man nomenclature in an SQL world, and I know, as this slide indicates, the projection model uses a package within uh, uh, Vista called SQLI, which provides some of that mapping, and the other nice thing is file man is somewhat self-describing um, in many ways, so we're able to walk the, the data definitions and, and then create the, the uh, accord the mapped or bound um, uh, SQL or relational uh, mapping. So I, I don't, know, Jeff. I don't know if you can answer that question in more detail than that, or or perhaps expose where I probably steered you in the wrong direction. But uh, um, I'm going to go to the next slide, and then maybe you could answer Richard's question. Did we lose you, Jeff? Yeah, no, not here. Um, yeah, uh, SQL is Keyword, and it will be named in slides itself. For instance, 
That help, Richard? A little bit? A little bit. Okay. Manually have to ma do the mappings yeah, of the or, or of the file man them. files and fields to the SQL tables and, and columns. Right. Yeah. No. So uh, I I think I can confidently answer that. Uh, uh, no. That that is the SQLI package does a lot of that map. So you uh, and we'll get to it. I'll show you. You you project a file man table or a file man file and on the other end and, and programmatically on the other end a table appears. So you kind of pick and choose, because there's thousands of files, you kind of pick and choose the ones you want to project. So you can say, I want to project file, the end file, you know, Patient. persons, yep. or whatever. Yep, that's exactly right. And that's what we'll, I'll, I'll be able to show that here. Okay, Jeff, so we're on the architecture slide. I don't know if there's more there, and I, I, think, uh, I think we've answered Richard's question for the most part. So I'm going to run through the demo as much as I can before I run out of time, and, and there probably will be questions that I can't handle, uh, so if you wouldn't mind sticking around. Um, the thing that I didn't mention uh, early on when we started here was I just want to, I just want to give you a kind of a flavor for the, the readiness of these projects. So OBID we've had in use uh, for, for a while now. We have it in, in several of our own production projects. It's in other uh, production projects elsewhere. So 
Um, that one is, uh, I, I think, a bit more stable if you're thinking about from a development perspective. FM projection just released, as you can see, there's a number of, uh, as Jeff mentioned, low-hanging fruit in terms of optimizations that could be done. So this is more of a, a, more of a development release, um, and I just want people to be clear. The whole point here, what we're trying to um, do is extend uh, the Vista platform wherever we can to increase uh, not only the applications and feature functionality and all that, but in general increase the contributions that can be made from outside of the normal kind of pool of, of developers that we have out there. There's, there's a much larger group that are interested and they, they, they come to World Vista, they come to uh, uh, DSS, they come to MedSphere and they ask, you know, well, how can I participate? And you know, very first thing we have to block, throw up is walls around, you know, well, you, you know, you have to be familiar with this language, you have to be familiar with these, you know, database tools, et cetera. Um, and what we're trying to do is, is kind of extend it and make it a little bit easier for others to, to get involved and contribute. So <clears throat> I'm going to move on to the demonstration pieces. Um, these, uh, as with all uh, live demos, you know, I'm probably doomed to failure here, but uh, I'm going to do the best that I can uh, to do an interesting uh, live demo. So the first thing I want to show you is FM Visualizer, FM Viz as we refer to it. It's a Java based uh, GUI that allows you to look, inspect the files and the details of the files and then it's also the tool that we use for projecting um, the data into the MySQL engine. So what I have on my machine here, just so everyone's aware of why I think this might crash and burn, is I've got a VM running, running Vista, I have the FMViz tool running. I have a couple other tools running, so the, the machine might get a little bogged down here. So let's see, um, <clears throat> let's see uh, if I can um, if I can show off what we've got. So this is the connection dialog box for FMViz. I'm just going to log in here to the appliance. So this is hitting an appliance on my machine. You'll notice the top box here is the connection to the Vista or Open Vista. Uh, 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 instance and the bottom is the connection to the uh, MySQL engine. So I'm just going to log in here. Excellent. So you're looking at essentially on the left hand side here a column of all of the files in, and you'll see there's some, some sub files etc listed out. Um, it's an extensive list and as you know as you start to drill anyone that's worked in Vista before you start to drill in there is uh, quite a few. I think I, I don't remember the last time we counted, but it was in the multiple thousands. Um, so you can do, uh, you know, things like uh, if we want to look at file two, for example, the patient file. Um, you can see now there's some tabs here. They're showing me that this is the self-describing nature of file man. That it shows the uh, description of the file and um, it has some data about where it's located. We can look at the columns and the types of uh, data elements that are in the patient file. And so this, Richard, to your question, this all of this, we didn't manually map the fields and everything. We just said project patient or patient file and boom, it, it showed up in, and I'll show that in a moment, but it, it showed up in MySQL. So here's a number of those things, uh, a number of the, the columns. Uh, you, can, you can look at indexes. Uh, you can look at data. Um, and I'm fearful, do we have, yeah, we do have patients in here. Let's see. It's spinning. I can see my little hard drive light spinning. What, what makes the file yellow? So that means there is sub, so you'll notice that's yeah, a folder icon representing Plus. sub. Yeah, let me see here. I think we may have uh, hit our very first, well, let's see. I could have sworn we had patient data. Hmm. Now let me come back to that. Uh, I, I, you know, as expected, there's nothing more humbling than a live demo, so I knew something like this would happen <laughs> almost immediately. I, I'm surprised I actually made it this far. So uh, you, you can inspect globals. Um, you can look at what this file is referenced by in terms of other files that are linking into it. Um, and then we added this little kind of uh, uh, toy. Um, this is, <laughs> see if this runs. This is a graphical representation of the interlinking of the files, sort of the foreign keys, if you will. It's trying. When you go into data, you stop the When I go in, I'm sorry, when I go into data. You've got a narrative. 
would you would you go into the data cap and stop the query that's running and and see what's what's wrong? No, I mean at this point, this is kind of you know as I mentioned, first release, so none of the nice polish is there. This is simple. Yeah. So this tool, this tool is working directly with the Vista database over, over, our, yeah, over our own transport and, uh, and just, you know, looking at the data and whatnot. So I'm not sure why the data didn't, uh, why everything else seems to be working and the data didn't. I was expect, I would expect everything to be broken. But um, uh, you can see there's, you know, there's this graph here. How, how useful it is. We're not sure yet, but yeah, we threw it up there. It's kind of cool. Um, so let me, uh, so let, let me do something else here. Uh, so we so we looked at the fields, we looked at the data globals, relationship. We didn't really look at the data because it didn't show up. Um, Three point one. Okay, so title. So let's look at the title file, and let's look at the data. Okay, so there we got some data. So I don't know if it's my machine being bogged down, but for whatever reason, I, I couldn't I couldn't get the data on the patient file, but. Um, the point here is you can actually look at the data. You can pull, you know, 50 at a time or whatever you want and, and page through the data that's available. Um, I am really surprised that it didn't just work. Hmm. Pretty sure we have patience. So um, <clears throat> in any case, uh, the next, so the next piece of this that I wanted to show was uh, sort of the standard SQL tools that you could use. So I'm going to go into a, cool, a tool called a DB Visualizer. Uh, which is again connect DB Visualizer. Uh, it's a I think free as in beer application, not open source, um, and it just connects to JDBC or ODBC providers, and that's what we've done here. We've connected up to the MySQL uh, server, and um, we have some tables that we've already projected. So again, this is connected to the virtual machine running on this box, and we've projected uh, these these tables, which we can then inspect from this side as well. So we can look at the new person. Uh, table. We can look at the columns. Uh, let's see if we can look at the data. So this is doing an actual SQL query, and it's able to see data. And you can see, if you remember the number of columns in here or fields in the FileMan world, you know this is quite a a big file. So there's a lot of sparse data in here, and, and anyway, you can you can browse through that. So basically, this is this is a standard SQL tool that's hooked up to MySQL, and, and we're looking at the data. Um, the other thing that we can do, let me just make sure I'm going the right direction here. So we can, I'm just going to pull open some queries rather than you watching me try to create queries on the fly or have John create them on the fly. We thought we'd just uh, go ahead and have them pre-built. So here's a standard select query. And that we're going to execute. Again, this is looking at the title, so you can see down below here. I hope you can see down below the titles uh, from the from the titles file have appeared. Um, we can do something a little bit more interesting. So let's say let's uh, let's do a little join. So let's see the users by their titles for so this query. Slightly more complex. Okay, so now we've uh, we've joined up these tables, and we're showing all of the users in the system from the new person file and their related title. All right. Go ahead. So this is not replication. This is projection, and I'll show that. In, in real time, hopefully it doesn't crash and burn on me, but I'll show that in real time. It is there's no data sitting in MySQL beyond the metadata that describes the FileMan structures. So <clears throat> um, this what's happening is it's the the data storage engine in MySQL is querying back to FileMan every time every time I'm running one of these queries. So this one uh, was one that uh, that John thought was a, a good one to show. We're using um, so the age field in uh, patient is calculated 
Uh, it's a calculated field. Is that the right way to describe it, George? Computed. Computed, thank you. Computed field. So we thought we'd take, George, John thought we'd take a computed field and then run it through the standard SQL functions that are available in the SQL uh, query language. So we're going to take the computed field and then average it and also do standard deviation on it. And so there you see the average age of the patient in our database is 44 and the standard deviation is 17.8 years. So that's kind of a comp complex in its own way query. And then uh, I think this, what was this, a subselect, John? Let's see, most recently yes. signed notes by provider. Right. The, you know, the idea here is that, uh, that there's other tools that are in open source and elsewhere that we can integrate into this type of platform. And we've just got to expose the, the edges of the thing so that you can get access to it. So you can do a lot of different things with this. You know, this SQL projection is not new. As I mentioned, Cache does it. There's a product that, that does it uh, on top of GTM. We want something that was open and available and agnostic to the M engine because our customers pick which M engine they want to use. So that's that's where we're that's 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 kind of the direction we took it. So this does this subselect very quickly. The subselect runs and uh, and it's showing the most recent note that was signed by each uh, provider in the system. And so if I update a note, you know th this would change. But you can see from a query standpoint. This is a somewhat complex query. So um, I appreciate we've gone over. I hope, I hope uh, hopefully this is compelling enough to, to stick to miss lunch. George is still here, because lunch might be served, George. <laughs> I know, you're waffling right now. OK, so. I know what it is, though. Oh, you know what it is. OK. <laughs> so, OK, so. Um, so, what, so, in, so what I want to do now is I want to I wanna actually project uh, Project some data. So, um, so let me see here. So here is the here is the state uh, the state file. Um, and to, Richard, to your point, so if I if I want to project this into MySQL, I'm going to check the project to SQL box, and then I'm going to say project to SQL. And I go back over to DB Visualizer. You'll note in the table listing here, there's no state file previously. Um, was it show tables? Show ta so show tables. Now there's a state file here. And if I refresh this, now I have a state file. So that was all done programmatically. OK. So let me move on just a bit further, if you just bear with me. Um, so, so in terms of the integration points I'm talking about, the reason why this is interesting in and of itself is now we can start attaching other tools to the system in different ways. And so um, we like the example because it's an easy one. There's, a, there's an open source reporting tool called Jasper. There's an open source uh, business intelligence tool called Pentaho. We'd like to integrate those things. So um, I went through and did uh, some very quick uh, reports. So they're not the most beautiful looking things. but. Um, and I'm not a, a, a Jasper. This is, this is the Jasper tool running on my machine. I've created some templated uh, reports here. So let's go ahead and look up um, how many users of each uh, personnel title, because we already looked at that. So I'm just going to preview this. And it's going to go and run the query and then pull back a report based on that template. And it's showing me that we've got 22 people without a personnel title, 10 clinical coordinators, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea being, this is obviously a very simple example, you can go and, and hook up a reporting tool and start doing some other things. So for example, let's go ahead and look at uh, patient allergies. So show me all of the patients in the system that have what is their allergy and who was the provider that noted their allergy. I, I mean, from a clinical perspective, if there's a clinician in the room, I know there's a few in the room, they're probably going, who the hell cares about this particular report? I don't know the report is relevant. The point is, this is the type of reporting that we can do. Um, 
So let's see. So sign notes in the last uh, in the last two weeks. So show me all these all the notes that have been signed in the last two. Obviously, this is a demo data set. There's not much going on here. So here's some notes. So the last. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, if the data's there, you know, we can show it. It's a super bill, right? This is what happens when you have two engineers designing clinical reports, right? We, yeah. I'm There's sure there was... That's a super bill, you know, which is something that, you know, is... is missing, missing, currently, yeah. Well, now, I'm not going to allow you to say it's missing. File in hand. Yeah, yeah. Data report and capability. Fair enough. Come back at 1,600 hours. Fair enough. George brings up a good point. This is not a. This is an alternative to FileMan, but it's not a necessarily a replacement. There are there are there are reporting tools. We obviously have numerous hospitals that are running the existing reporting tools right now. Um, they we you know as a company take them through training. FileMan is a very uh, uh, flexible and robust query tool as well, and, um, and and we have tons of reports that run out of that now. Hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds. So. That, that, you know, on that point. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, so this is CIS running against, again, against the VM. Uh, and uh, this is the patient laboratory. Uh, so let's go ahead and enter a new allergy for them. Um, and I don't know what a good uh, allergy would be. What do we say? Jellyfish? Something. Okay, so jellyfish, they're allergic to jellyfish. Thing. Who isn't allergic to jellyfish things? I don't know. But uh, so they have an allergy. Let's say it was observed. You know, uh, it was severe. They were uh, they were confused from there, and uh, sorry, they were confused. All right. So now we have our, our allergy that I've just added for uh, um, the, the the patient laboratory. Let's go back over to iReports and let's look at the patient allergy list. Let's refresh this report. And now you have patient laboratory showing here with the jellyfish thing. So that is the, it's not replicating data. We didn't have to wait. That was in real time. It went and queried, pulled back the data, and, and we had the report. Matt, did you say that was CIS running against the VM? So this is, sorry, this is, I may have said that, but what I meant to say was this is CIS running against the VM. Okay. So, so this is, this is, this is the, the clinical front end running against the virtual machine. So let me see here if I've got, so that was, uh, oh, I actually think this might, um, I mean, this is really the same thing again, but if I, if I rerun this report, I think, oops, if I rerun this report, I think I get a new note in here as well. So yeah. I think I'll let John tackle the question of configuration because he's the one who did the majority of the packaging with, with Jeff and, and Andy's help. He did the majority of the packaging of this. You want me to answer now? Okay, sure. Okay. Uh, and loudly. And loudly. <laughs> uh, so what I did um, was I go ahead and went and built um, packages of MySQL with the file and storage engine in it uh, for Mr. John Kate and Harmic. So those are available. Uh, the link is through Metro. So those are available. You can just add an app store and then have to install our modified MySQL server and you have to run it in the Java or Harmony installation. You have MySQL ready to go. You need to tell MySQL where the RTC broker is for the missing instance that you want to query. So that's one configuration file that's not going to do that. Once you have that done, MySQL is ready to go. You can just you can run your normal application on MySQL if you stand on MySQL. And in addition to that, have the S storage engine. So then you need to use um, the FMVista for the manually Um, 
uh, you also get to add an entry. And the, the install doc contains? The install doc contains the instructions for how to do it. Um, but I understand that there are a couple of technologies here that the you know, Vista folks may not understand what these need to be. Correct. Well, <laughs> the relational database folks probably don't really understand the metrics. So, I mean, I love this. Yes, <laughs> so, yes, exactly. Which is why this is a lot of fun. But at the same time, I understand there's a lot of folks involved. Okay. So um, yes, please do ask a question. And the other thing is, you know, if you ask a question on Metro.org, then the answer is archived for the next cat who has the thing. So please do sign up on Metro.org, ask questions. Yep. Yeah. You could potentially then just push it out as a CC. Yes. I mean, there's a number of ways that you could pull the data out. Uh, you know, George George's team has gone through, you know, a particular uh, manner. They've exposed it as M. They've done some. They have some batch processing capabilities. All of those things. You could use this once you understand the mapping of the data that's required for the CCR CCD. You could use this to write your own queries. You could use Mirth, for example. It can query a SQL store and do things on the back end and then do all kinds of integration stuff with Mirth. There's, there's a lot of things. This is a very raw tool that you could create things with. Right, lots of languages. SQL has a lot of external integration which is proprietary. Right, yeah. How I mean, just for the and I don't really care. Like I do, but I don't You're conflicted. How hard is this to port to other relational database or for SQL Server? How hard is I'm sorry? Would it be to port this? I know it's running on my SQL. Oh, uh well so Yeah, so it, it would a very clean storage engine API. It says here you implement these calls and these storage engine. So we just implement a couple of calls to either do a data scan, do a fetch data, fetch a row, here's an index, whatever, and then you know a lot of work is done. So I mean it depends on how it is to write plugin for it. Yeah, I don't I, that's the that's exactly right. So if you look at the architecture slide here, you know, you can see the whole point is there's other database storage plugins that, that have been written for MySQL um, and and uh, you know when, when yeah Jeff Jeff you know looked at this looked at what was available and said you know that's that's a this is a good tool to use and uh, and and by the way now we don't have to worry about query optimization and supporting SQL standards and all of that we get that you know quote for free um, by, by leveraging that. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Uh, okay, good, Bhaskar. Well, just a quick comment on that. About 15 years ago, Oracle actually released the gateway to MOPS. I don't know whether it was a commercial success or anything like that, but such a thing has been existed for quite a few years. Okay. Any uh, any other questions we can answer? Great. Well, hopefully we'll see you on Metzger.org uh, asking questions as you go about installing this and uh, and testing it out. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks, Andy and Jeff. Thanks for your time.